Amen, amen. Acts, the 16th chapter, starting at verse 16. When you have it, please say amen. And the word of God says, one day, reading from the New Living, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer. Mm. By the way, we have 12 o'clock prayer. For those that's able, if you're off tomorrow or if you have a lunch break and uh, you, you stay, I mean, you walk around the church, you're more than welcome to come out and pray. It's not just for those that's members of going off of Christ Church. If you're online, we have 12 o'clock prayer. God put me on that prayer, my God, since last Friday, and we've been praying every day since, except on Wednesdays. But tomorrow we'll be back here praying at 12 noon. You're more than welcome to come. So one day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. Who are you a slave to? Mm. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Now here go a troubled young woman that's possessed by a demon spirit. She was bit by pythons with the great John MacArthur uh, translated. She had a python spirit that had bit her. But she knew enough. Look at the demon speaking, y'all. These people has come to tell you how to be saved. That's a demon. Oh, my God, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Telling, my God, the people, my God, that Paul and Silas has come to tell you how to be saved. A demon is speaking that. Boy, y'all need to catch that. Y'all need to catch that. Who be careful. Be careful who you're listening to. A demon is telling the people, these people has come. I'm going to say it again. A demon is telling the people that these people, Paul and Silas, has come to tell you and I how to be saved. Then it come from Pastor Mallon. Then it come from Pastor Champ. Then it come from Amber. It came from a demonic spirit. Be careful in this hour what you're connected to and who you're connected to. Boy, y'all. Y'all too low for me. Y'all got to come on now. I need some type of push. Yeah, my God, my God. And she followed Paul, this demon did, my God, and, the, and, and, and was constantly shouting. These men were servants of the Most High. And they have come, as I said, to tell you how to be saved. Verse 18. This went on day after day until Paul got exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus, oh my God, to come up out of her. And instantly, my God, uh, it left her. Oh, but the apostles had power to speak to the demons. Mm. Her masters, watch this, her masters, verse 19, her masters' hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul. Uh-oh, they upset now, y'all. They grabbed Paul. I'm trying to bring that into the story. Uh, they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar. I told y'all I want to be a troublemaker. Paul then went into the cities and turned them upside down. Yeah, my God, when you walk in the authority and the power of God, my God, you have the power to turn the city upside down. Oh my God, the whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching custom, now they started to lie, that are illegal for us Romans to practice. Verse 27 says, 22 says, a mob, somebody say mob, mob, quickly formed against Paul and Silas. And the city officials ordered them, watch this, stripped and beaten with robbers. See, that wasn't the type of beating you thinking. I know grandma whooped you and I with a stitch of cord, but it was way worse than that. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. So they didn't get to go to the doctor. They nobody put no camphor for Nick on them. Did nobody rub them down. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. Oof. I'm trying to bring your mind into the story so it won't just be a normal Bible study for you. You can leave up out of here with some revelation. Mm. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon uh, and clamped their feet in the stocks. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Around midnight, somebody say midnight. midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners was listening. Oh my God. Uh, people are watching how you go through stuff. People are watching and listening how you go through stuff. <laughs> 
Uh, let me say that again. People are watching and listening how you and I go do stuff. Mm, I'm going to say that one more time. Because y'all saying yes, but you got to get some revelation. People are watching and people are listening how you go through stuff. People need to see you go through stuff and see how you go through stuff so it can encourage them. Sometimes God allows you to experience stuff because he want to train you so you can train somebody else that's watching you how to go through stuff. Everything you're going through ain't about you. Oh my God, I know it seems unfair. I know you don't understand it. But if you think not in due season, you'll see the glory of the Lord. Oh, I feel. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's, it's so they was listening. And then suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundation. Uh oh, foundation class. And all the doors immediately flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. Oh my God. Ah, two people shake the whole prison. My God. Oh my God. The power of two. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. uh, the jello woke up. Now, watch this. The jello woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew the, his sword to kill himself. But Paul said, shouted and said, Stop. Somebody say, Stop. He said, Don't kill yourself. We're right here. We are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling now. Come on now. And, and, and trembling before Paul and Silas. And watch this. Then he brought them out and asked. I'm going a little further. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I'm going to go a little farther. Come on. Verse 31 says, And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. What that's called, that's called household salvation. Father God, I thank you for the few minutes. Teach with substance. Strengthen your people. Oh my God, Lord, I feel it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Speak, Lord. Set somebody free. Save somebody's soul. Restore. Uh, bring back up out of darkness into the marvelous light, Father God. Penetrate, my God. We're pregnant, Father God. We're ready to push it on out, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. Oh, my God, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Why God do me like this? My God. Oh, my God. Y'all don't understand when you're pregnant with something. Mm. There's so much I want to share with you. Just buckle up. Church, there's a lot of great things going on inside and God is moving quickly. My God, I got a prophetic word today. My God, I've been sitting on it for quite some time. Uh, the man of God reached out to me, my God, and uh, he just told me it's simple. God said, now is your time. Now is your time. See, some of y'all looking for a prophetic word, but you don't understand the substance. That's a loaded statement when God said it's your time. And when I look at the things that's happened since Sunday to present, God, that word has been mm, the favor, the things that's happening with the community center, the divine connections along the way. Oh, my God, it happened so quickly. So now look at your neighbor and say, now is your time. Understand this, saints, because some of y'all don't understand this, that when God give a prophetic word to you, the house that you connected to, the word ain't just for pastor people, it's for you. See, I need y'all to come all the way up. I need y'all to get all the way focused tonight because when God give a prophetic word, that wasn't just for me, that was for everybody that's connected to me. Now is the time. Look at your neighbor and say, now is the time. Oh, my God. Y'all got to learn how to get excited about the things of God. Oh, my God. Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, I received that, God. And I just told God in intercessory prayer, my God, if that's your word, then let it manifest. And God reminded me, look at this, what happened already before you got the word. It's already happening. Oh, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know sooner or later. Just buckle down. God, and the people may know and understand that the hand of the Lord is on this church. Boy, y'all better come on. I'm trying to tell somebody. I'm trying to shift, my God. Paul and Silas found themselves in a difficult place has anybody ever been in a difficult place they were in prison dealing with oppression and suffering like some of us is right now the time is now though deliverance is now healing is now we receive that pull that down up out of heaven my god oh my god they was in prison dealing with oppression and suffering in that prison they experienced the grace of god in the prison See, I got to be careful because, see, when I get a microphone, I want to turn into a Baptist preacher and go to preaching and shouting and hollering. But I want to teach y'all. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, daughter. In that prison, not when they got out of prison, 
In the fire, not when they get out the fire. In the storm, not when they get out the storm. In the hell, not when they get out the hell. Oh my God, they experienced, oh my God, the grace of God. Mm. They received everything they needed to transform prison, the prison of pain into the prison of praise. Oh my God, it may be, my God, that someone here is locked away in a prison of pain. I want you to see that God can take your pain and turn it into praise for his glory. And so the title of this sermon is From Pain to Praise. Oh my God, from pain to praise, my God. Oh my God, pain has a way, oh my God, of ushering you, my God, into a deeper relationship with God. So point number one, let, let me teach you a little bit. I don't know how much I'm going to get finished, so I'm going to take my time. But uh, we'll come back next week if the Lord delay is coming. But let's look at this place. Let's dissect this scripture, my God. Because when you teach, my God, you got to dissect it, my God. So put point number one up there for me, Mahogany. This was a place that Paul and Silas was dealing with. It was a place of misery. But even in the midst of the misery, as I constantly read this, and this all come from this reading, the one you're reading. That's why it's so good to read. Oh, my God. And they was in a place of misery. But God moved in the place of misery. Are y'all with me so far? Verse 17 to 18 says, she followed Paul and the rest of us. Shouting, these men are servants of the most high God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on, as the scripture has told us, day after day until Paul got so fed up that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you, in the name of Jesus, to come out. When you get tired, you'll do something different. When you get fed up with something, my God, you will begin to do something different. See, we could cry, but that don't mean we fed up. <laughs> We can complain about our situation, but that don't mean we fed up. When you really, really get fed up, then you're going to sh shift. Uh, when you really get fed up, you're going to do something about it. When you really get fed up, you're going to stop doing it. Whatever's causing your pain, you're going to stop. When you really get fed up. When you get fed up, my God, you say it don't matter no more. I'm going to trust God, even if I got to do it by myself. I can't take this no more. I'm sick and tired of this right now. I'm fed up, my God. And then you got to be willing to do something about it after you get fed up. So when Paul, when, when Paul and the company arrived in Philippi, they was, they, was, they was expecting great things to happen. After all, the Lord, now watch this, y'all. After all, the Lord sent them to the city. The Lord, the Spirit of God led them. The Spirit of God sent them on assignment into the city. But as soon as the Lord started blessing, the devil began to work. That's why you can't, you can't celebrate too long. After you get a victory through God, my God, give God the glory, shout for a day, and then get ready to go to war. Because here come the enemy. Are you with me so far? So up on point number one, let's look at the accusations. Write that down. My God, the, the misery of the accusations. Paul and Silas were falsely accused. Have anybody ever been lied on? Have anybody been vexed? You're constantly being uh, uh, accused of stuff that you ain't doing. I can't get nobody there. Uh, yeah, God going to talk to you tonight. Paul and Silas were falsely accused by selfish men who cared nothing but about money. These men did not care about the poor demon-possessed woman, my God, who, woman of whom they had made their living. Uh, they was upset with Paul and Silas. Uh, this woman, my God, provided a good living. Uh, they was living real good behind this woman's oppression and depression. This woman was bound up, my God, but there was... The, the other people was benefiting, my God, from her oppression. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and these men was upset with, upset with Paul and Silas because they came in and disrupted uh, the cheese. Let me make it where you understand it. They, they messing with that bread. Now, we got a real problem now. You can do a whole lot of stuff. We still messing with the money. Now, we got, it is what it is from that day forward. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, they started lying and scheming to get revenge on Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. The problem with their story is they begin to tell the people in charge uh, 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 that was that the, the, the problem with the story is that nothing those men said about Paul and Silas were true. Have, is people saying something about you that's not true? And so the word of God says every tongue that rises up against you shall be utterly cast down. There are certain things that you don't even have to get no attention to. There's certain things you don't have to give no energy to because what you feed will live and what you don't feed will die. See, see, when somebody accuses you of something, you know it ain't true, let your reputation supersede you. That's why it's so important, my God, to live something instead of talk something, my God. Are you with me? If you know you ain't doing it, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. 
Come on, somebody. So, 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 so they begin to lie. Uh, when the enemy is trying to get a foothold on you, he, he'll lie on you. When the enemy is trying to get on top of you, he will lie. He will assassinate your character. He will begin to, my God, to try to make people, my God, who talk about you and bring up stuff that's not true. That's all part of the scheme. So let me help you. Where I'm going with this, some of us get so bent out of shape because somebody say something about us that's not true. You're ready to cut somebody's head off because somebody said you did something. If you know you didn't do it, learn how to stand still and stand on the square. You don't have to give, you don't have to render evil for evil. Soon as somebody say something wrong, look at you wrong, I say something about you, my God, you ready to cut their head off. Christians. Learn how to stand still. Real talk, listen to the substance. Learn how to stand still and let, you, and let your integrity fight for you. Let the truth of God fight for you. You might God, you ain't got to use your hands or your mouth. Uh, you don't have to begin to call somebody lie on you, you go lie on them. You don't have to put nobody on blast on Facebook, Christians. You don't have to put your business on Facebook, Christians. People can always tell when something's going on with you because you put everything on social media. Just yesterday it was God, God, God. Now today, now you're talking about... So, you, so what am I saying? You bring unnecessary attention to you that you really can't handle. You put stuff out there and then you, you put it out there on social media. People going to they, they gonna say what they want to say. You give people an opportunity to form their own uh, perception and formulate their own opinion. You can't get mad. You put it out there. And whether they're telling the truth or not, you should have never put it out there. Oh, we're going to we tell them we're going to tell you pain. Mm. Have you ever been lied on? Have you ever been lied on? The things that these men were saying about Paul and Silas was not true. And here's Paul and Silas, as I slow down, they were doing their best to serve the Lord, and still trouble came. Have you ever been there? Are you doing your best, and trouble still came? Are you doing your best, and trouble still came? I'm sorry if some of you growed up in church where they told you as long as you get saved, you ain't got to never worry about going through nothing no more. Because if you read your Bible, you know right there that that was a lie. Because the Bible says, Paul, the same one I'm preaching about, said all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. Uh, Jesus said they persecuted me, so they're going to persecute you. That's all type of scripture arming us and preparing us, my God, to, for the war that we are enlisted in. So Paul then was dealing with some misery behind lies. And now they're arrested. Put, write this down up on the point number one. Look, it be the misery of the arrest. Misery. Notice I put misery. They in a tough place, y'all. When the rest of the people of Philippi heard the false accusation, they turned on Paul and Silas. Oh, my God. Do anybody know what I'm talking about? Have anybody ever turned on you? And some people will turn on you off of a lie. People won't even take time to say, champ, I need to talk to you about something. They just automatically form a perception off a lie, and they turn on you, and you know why they turned on you. They fall back on you. They start mistreating you and all that on the lie. And don't even take time. That's why I teach y'all whatever you don't confront won't change. It, it, it is very ungodly for Pastor Champ to be sitting right here and Dominique is sitting right here and Pastor Champ is feeling some kind of way about Dominique. I'm talking about really some kind of way about Dominique because something he heard or even may be true. But he up here giving God the glory. He down on his knees at 6 o'clock prayer. My God, he walking out with the pastor because he's the armor bearer. But he got an issue with somebody sitting less than three feet away from him. But I supposed to be going hard for Christ. See, that's out of order. That's out of order. See what I'm trying to say? And, and, and then he's sitting up here offended. My God, I have formed a perception. I'm trying to teach you, church. I formed a perception, my God, about this man off of something that Pastor Matlin may have said to Chow. My God, that didn't even lie. You see how the enemy tried to destroy a body from within? Yeah. She told him something that's a lie. And then now he got a perception about him. There's three people that's affected behind one lie. And then ain't no telling, my God, if Dominique started telling her, and then she started telling her fiance, and he started telling his son, my God. And now you got a whole front row of people in the church feeling some kind of way, contamination off for a lie. Because nobody was wanting to say, look, I need to holler at you before this lie tramp, mm, circulate through the church. Oh, I know y'all don't want to say that because y'all dealing with that right now. It's all good. It's all good. That's all good. That's how the enemy started trying to deter down the ministry from within off for of lies. And then we're supposed to be going hard for Christ, but we won't even talk to the person that we think that lied on us. And we're standing right beside him and lift our hands when he say, look, man, I got an issue with you, woman of God. I got an issue with you, man of God. 
There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's how you handle kingdom business inside of God's kingdom. Mm, Lord. Some things, that you, some things you have to confront. Everything going to just go away because you leave it alone. Oh, I'm sorry. Paul and Silas is miserable, though. They in misery behind this arrest. Watch this. They, they was hauled into court. And they were beaten. These men were beaten like common criminals and thrown into prison. All they had done was preach the gospel and try to help someone. And their troubles got worse and worse. Have you ever been there? All they did is go to a city that the Spirit of God led them to and preach the gospel. They wasn't bothering this woman or these men. They lied on them. They going on about their business. The Bible says day after day. See, the enemy going to keep jabbing. Lawanya, he gonna keep coming. <laughs> he gonna if he can't get you on that door, he coming around the other door. If he can't come through that door, the back door, he coming through the window. Come on, the Bible says death has crawled through the windows. Come on, somebody. However, the enemy can get in, my God, he's coming in. Who, my God, that's why you gotta be covered, my God, with the whole armor on, my God, because he's looking for many opportunities, many ways, my God, to get in. Because he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Are y'all with me so far? Who, my God? And so, have you ever been there? Look at your name and say, I've been there. So ask yourself this question right here. How is the enemy getting in? How is the enemy right now? The very thing that's on top of you, the very frustration, the very problems that we're having, the very pain that we may be dealing with. My God, even if it's dealing with health issues, my God, is it too much chocolate? That's lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. There's only three ways, my, that a man shall be tempted. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the proud of life. Those three, lust of the eyes, the book of James, lust of the flesh, you want it, but you know you ain't supposed to have it. Come on, somebody, and you do it anyway. Now you got high blood pressure and diabetes. How is the enemy getting in? Lust of the eyes, you see it? Your flesh want it? And the pride say, I'm grown, I can do what I want, so you do it. At the expense of your own life. The doctor told you if you don't do it, Mike, stop doing it. Something's going to happen to you, but you yet chill do it. Because the flesh is too strong. It's called keen stomach. Have you ever been there? Let me take it off of that. Have you ever been just doing right? You ain't bother nobody. You're trying to live right, do right, love right. And all of a sudden, hell breaks out in your life. Have anybody... Okay, so I'm talking to the right crowd. You ain't bothering nobody. You really whop, op, operating in love. You know, let go of a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness and all those type of stuff. You ain't, you're just doing what God, you're just trying to love your husband. You're just trying to love your wife. And it seems like I can't never get ahead. I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to love my brothers. And they always lying on me. Uh, it's amazing when your pastor, the very people your pastor get jealous of you. When you, try, when, when you show everything to try to help them, I can't get nobody say, Are you jealous of your sister? And then you start lying on her? Are you jealous of your brother? Then you start lying on her? This, all this stuff goes on in the body. So I'm going to make it would affect the body because I want the body to be healthy. I didn't come to preach you happy. I come to build your faith, my God, so you can be transformed so you can go through the process that God is taking you on. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there, Jackie? Have you ever been there? I'm going to hammer that in. Have you ever been there? Oh, my God, have you ever felt, my God, God, why? I'm doing what you told me to do. Remember, Paul and was in Philippi doing what God told them to do. And now they find themselves being lied on, beaten, and in prison for doing. Oh, but Pastor, you always say God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful. How can God be a faithful God and he allowed us to be lied on, beaten, and now we're in prison for doing right? I can suffer if I know I did wrong. Them 13 years they gave me in prison, I did it. I was wrong, wrong, guilty, guilty, guilty. Oh my God, but when you in, in prison by, for not being guilty and beaten to the point of being so much disfigured, they was beating, my God, bad with clubs. The, 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 the scholars say Clay was beaten. They was broke down. Oh my God, the head was swollen all over his manger beating and then thrown in prison. They didn't get to go to the doctor. They, they, they wasn't no first aid. It wasn't nobody rubbing them down. And, and, and you know how grandma all them get that mentholator and camphor and all that old type of stuff? You know, wasn't none of that, my God. And they did all this, my God, and they wasn't doing nothing but obeying God. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt miserable doing God's work? Is that only me? Okay, I'm talking to the right people. I'm going to leave that alone. Oh, my God. Mm. But let's go a little deeper. Write this down. See, up on the point number one. Let's look at the misery of their accommodation. 
Uh, Paul and Silas were handed over to the jailer and thrust into the inner prison, and, and their feet were locked in stocks. My God, they, they have been chained amongst mud, filth, I'm going to lay this for y'all, and human race. My God, they weren't just in the regular prison, they was in the prison within the prison. We call it in our time called DU. That means all your rights is taken from you. Now, when I was looking at this through John, uh, John MacArthur, they were stoned in prison, y'all. And the Bible says their feet was in stocks. And what they did, my God, back then, my God, and keep in mind, they didn't have no stool. Wasn't no TV. They, 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 didn't have, they, they, they stool, this is, this is true. They, they, their, their stool was a hole in the ground. So they, they were sitting amongst other people's waste. Remember that you can't flush it every time. Y'all need to stay. Let me, let me teach you. I'm finna go somewhere. When I was incarcerated 20 plus years ago, I want to make sure I say that 20 plus years ago, when the penitentiary, oh my God, when they wanted to get a hold of the penitentiary and get control of the penitentiary, they throw you in your cell and then they shut the water off for three days. So imagine being locked up in a six by nine prison cell with no water for three days, you and another man. You got to use the bathroom. You got to have bowel movements and you can't flush it, baby. For three days, and in the penitentiary, my God, there is no air conditioner. So you got a fan, my God, you trying to stay cool, my God, so that fan is circulating that filth, I can't get, and that smell. See, I want y'all to feel what these men was going through behind preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, we too pampered in America. We can't go through nothing. Paul then was in a cold-blooded situation behind preaching the gospel. Have you ever been there? I can identify, that's why you get some passion, because I know what it's like to be locked up. I've been in a dungeon. I know what it's like when the water's shut off and I'm locked in my cell and it's 110 degrees outside. Oh my God, there ain't no circulation, ain't nobody doing nothing. And we boo-booing on top of boo-boo. My God, it's filthy up off in the flies and everything in the cell. She ain't never been there. I have. That's why I give God the glory, because I know when it's like God been too good to boy. Ah, he been too good to me, baby. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to let y'all rob me of it. I give God the glory. I ain't going to let y'all religious people rob me of my glory. I'm sorry I got a little passionate right there. I, I just had a moment. <laughs> I just had a moment online. Don't pay me no mind. Oh, when you've been on death door, <laughs> when you've seen God move, <laughs> when you remember what it used to be, you look at it what it is today, you can say God is a faithful God. He's a way maker. When it seems like there is no way, he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. See, I know him to be all that. So Paul was dealing with that. And the great John MacArthur said they had them chained. And they spread their legs apart. And they was like this for hours and days. Eventually, the scripture said that they start cramping. Excruciating pain. This is the next thing to crucifixion. Can you, can you imagine being spread like this for days? In the midst of filth. In the midst of filth. In the midst of filth. You ain't getting no good water. You ain't, and you use the bathroom. Guess what you how you use the bathroom? On yourself. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Because they didn't let them out to use the bathroom. Because the bathroom was a hole in the ground. So when he was right there like this for days, Shante, they was using the bathroom on theyself. Behind preaching the gospel. Doing the right thing. See, I'm trying to get you to understand, but pray yourself. See, the things that God has given me today, this stuff is foundational. Can you go through something? Can you go through something and stand for God? We quit the first time somebody don't speak to us. We lead a church the first time somebody don't do something we want them to do. The first time a pastor don't say, you know, acknowledge you. I, I, don't, I don't promote you when you, want to go, when you don't want to go through the problem. We quit. These men didn't quit. They suffered excruciating pain, pain behind preaching the gospel. Have you ever been there? Come on, y'all. Have you ever been there? I know y'all with me. Y'all feeling it. So they was in a dark dungeon. Oh, my God. That was, uh, and they was, on, they was there for no other reason but behind being faithful. But pastor, you always say this, God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful. Uh, and some people may be looking online, they be like, you mean Tim, I got to go through that? Yep. It might not be specifically that, 
but you got to go through something. Everybody got a cross. I am not finished it up and tell you, my God, that it's going to be easy. This is a suffering way. That's why Jesus says straight and narrow is the road that lead to eternal life. Oh, my God, listen to me, Gret, and there be few that find it and travel it. Many travel the road that leads to death and destruction. You know why? Because you ain't got to pay a price to be on a wide road, but you got to pay a price to walk on a narrow road. You got to be willing to be ostracized, lied on, talked about, misunderstood, mishandled. Oh, my God, when you stand for Christ, my God, you better be ready to suffer. I'm going to teach you right, baby. You can't talk about you a Joshua nation. You can't talk about you going hard for Christ, but you can't take nothing, baby. You got to have faith that's last. How you built for it tough, baby. Paul said, I've kept the faith. I went through hell. They lied on me. They talked on me, my God. Paul was telling his young son, Timothy, the old man was teaching a young man, you got to keep the faith. When you understand and don't understand, when it look good and it don't look good, when it feel right and don't feel right, when she walk out, you, you got to stay down. When he walk out, you got to stay down. When the kids are tripping, you got to stay down. When they lay you off the job, you got to stay down. Do you got faith that'll keep you in the midst of the trials and tribulations? My God, who am I talking to? You got to be able to take something for God. Can you stand? And after you've done all the stand, can you continue to stand? No, we quit too much. We quit too easy because so many of us is preaching this old surface pastoring. Sorry. Get with the root system. He told the young, the old man told the young man, my God, I've kept the faith. Through dangerous toils. If you understand Paul making that statement, Lawanya, Paul went through hell. He paid a price to stand for Christ. I'm talking about, he said, I kept the faith through it all. Everything I had to endure behind professing to be a man or woman of God, Paul said, I did not quit. I did not tap out on God. I did not let other people cause me to shipwreck. Oh, I didn't get so discouraged, my God, while I walked away from my relationship with God. Many people has quit on God in this hour. And some of us are here tonight ready to quit. But God come to pick you up tonight. Stand. Stand. Amen, woman of God. Stand. You got to stand. Don't quit. Come on, stand. I want you to symbolically stand. Oh my God, some of you are ready to quit, but I need you to stand. The load that's on top of you, the weight that's on top of you, stand. Oh my God, come on, stand up under it, my God. Oh my God, you got to stand. Don't quit. Don't quit. Go ahead, you can be seated now. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there though? Have you ever been there? Mm. They was in this dungeon, locked up, using a bathroom on themselves. Felt all alone. Sometimes God will let you get to a place where you feel all alone. Uh, you feel like you abandoned. You feel like don't nobody love you. Don't nobody care about you. Sometimes God got to let all your crutches and everything you lean on, everything you trust in, he got to allow all that stuff, my God, to walk out. He got to allow that stuff to die. Oh, my God, he got to allow that stuff to shift up out of there because you got too many idols, my God, interfering with God's purpose in your life. Come on. So God got to allow some things to happen in your life. I know y'all want to hear it, my God. There's some pain to praise, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at number two. I want to get through with this so you can shout at the end. Oh, my God. But while they're in this place of misery, watch how God laid this. While they're in a place of ministry, they started ministry. <laughs> while they're in this place of ministry, ministry, misery, they start doing ministry. Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter and the woman with the issue of blood came up behind him and touched the heel. He was on his way to do ministry and he was doing ministry while he was on his way. See, you think, my God, you got to be all the way. You got to get to moving, my God. You got to be doing something. Jesus was on his way to heal somebody. My God, raise somebody from the dead and the woman with the issue of blood said, if I could just get to him, I better start moving now. He's on the move. Oh, my God. So if I don't get to him now and she couldn't even walk because she was in so much pain. So she said, you know what? I ain't to make no excuses so she got down and the woman of God crawled she crawled she said if I could just get to the hem of his garment I met faith pushed her faith made her crawl and keep in mind this woman was bleeding my God so she was considered defiled she wasn't even supposed to be in the temple you couldn't be in defiled my God to be in the temple she said I don't cut nothing about no religious rules I don't cut nothing about y'all's order of service I need to get healed and the man that's gonna heal me is in front of me and he's on the move and if I gotta crawl if I gotta crawl if I gotta crawl my God if you gonna kill me you better kill me because I'm dying already so but my healing is on the move and I gotta get to the healer because he's on the move some of y'all wait for Jesus to come your way Jesus is on the move you gotta follow him he ain't following you I can't get nobody to say nothing right there hey 
Hey, when you get to him, you go from pain to praise. Oh, the woman of God got to him and she went from pain uh, to praise. Oh, you want him to come your way? No. That's why you got to get up at your seat and come to him at time. You got to make your way to the altar at time. You got to get to him. You got to stretch. You got to stretch. He stretched. She said, I ain't got to touch his head. I don't need nobody to see me. I just come right down. That show you the power of God. The power of God was just as powerful at the bottom as it was at the top. Oh, my God. This ain't glory sitting up here. Me know you want to sit here, but you don't know the price you got to pay. It's more power back there than it is up here. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there if I can just trust the him. This thing can see this here if I get to get to the top. She said, if I can just get to the him. Oh, my God. Let me get you out of this. Let me get you out of this. Is this helping anybody so far? That's why I don't like these microphones, man. Get uh, so now they was dealing with misery but when you're in God God turns your misery, misery into ministry so write this down it's a place of ministry oh my God write A up under point number two personal oh some of the things you're going through is personal when Paul and Silas found themselves in prison they were hurting y'all is anybody hurting tonight come on let's keep it on the dollar Come on, if you're hurting tonight, let me see your hand. I want to know that God, okay, they was hurting. Oh, have you ever been humiliated? Have you made a mistake and people, t- yeah, 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 they was humiliated, my God. And they needed some encouragement. In their hour of need, they had no person to turn to for help. Uh, uh, they, 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 they hurting. They humiliated. Uh, but they ain't got nobody. Both of them is beaten. Both of them is bruised. Both of them is oppressed. Both of them is hurting. They in this city that the Spirit of God led them to. So they ain't got no covering. They ain't got nobody that they can talk to in the city. Sometimes God remove everything. He remove everybody. And he sets it up just like that. God is just like that. I promise you, my God. And so uh, they looking at each other. Both of them hurting, crying. Ain't no telling what they saying. Oh, my God. For a minute, I know they cried. For a minute, it hurt it. For a minute, they rejoice. And now they in this situation, but they turn. Who, who going to help us get out of here? We ain't got no bail money because they ain't going to give us no bond. I can't call nobody to come get me. Watch this now. Stay with me now. Because I'm here because the spirit of the living God led me here. So God set it up with one. With, with, it's just them two against the world. One could put a thousand to flight. Two could put ten thousand. See, see, you don't know who's on your side. Come on, somebody. You think you got to have ten thousand? God said, "I just need three hundred. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there." Uh-uh. And so, and so, and so, and so they ain't got nobody to depend on. They can't turn to nobody, so they got to turn to each other. Uh, you got, you got to have a battle buddy. Uh, who, who, who? Oh my God, who will get in a foxhole with you? I teach my men, my God, on Monday nights. <laughs> That's why I got to come this Monday coming up. My God, you got, do you got one person that'll get in the foxhole with you? What's that one person you'll drag all the way to a little hole and can't nobody fit but you and him? Are uh, you and her? I'm going to tell you, my foxhole, my God, is, is six feet tall. And her name is Michelle Lorraine Peoples. She's get she been in the foxhole for a whole lot, for a long time. Who do you got there to get in the foxhole with you? I promise you, my God, who do you got? I want you to think about that. Can Amber go to the foxhole with you? You finna marry her, but she better be able to get in that foxhole with you. Oh, my God. You don't need to reach for nobody else. You better reach for your wife. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Who, who can get in the foxhole? Who's your battle buddy? Who can get in the foxhole with you? Have you ever thought about that? You'll find out, my God, Alonzo, oh, my God, who your real partner is when it's time to get in that foxhole. And you put your body, come on, you put your back up against each other. Can you put, who, who, who can you put your back up against? Oh, you're beating everybody against you. You're in a city, my God, that God told you to go to. They didn't beat you up. They didn't throw you in prison. My God, you got a whole, it's you against the whole city. Who can you put your back up against? Who going to stay down with you? When you turn to the left, is they going to beat her? When you turn to the right, is they going to beat her? Who going to go back to back with you, baby? You got the back and I got your back. Can we stand together? How can two people walk together except to be agreement? Who is your battle buddy? Who can you get in the hole with? Are you laying up with men and women that you can't get in the foxhole with? Are you got people in your life that won't go in the foxhole with you? At the first sign of persecution, at the first sign of trial, they run off and leave you. You better know who your battle buddy is. Somebody give God some glory in this place. My God. Oh, Jesus. They ain't got nobody. All they got is each other. And I'm, I can imagine God set it up just like that. 
Oh my God, God set it up, my God. He wait to everybody that you depend on, everything that you depend on. And my God, did he say, now it's time for me to work. We depended on everything but the source. Oh my God. We depended on everything but the source. Sometimes God got to just let everything forsake you. He turned his back on Jesus. He turned his back on himself, really, in the flesh. Come on, somebody. Uh, Lord, Lord, why has thou forsaken me? Oh, I know you feel like right now, God is speaking, church. God, I know you feel forsaken. Oh, my God, but you still ain't there yet. I know you say, I've been doing through this for the last year. You still ain't ready. <laughs> Uh, Pastor, you can't tell me I'm not ready. You ain't in my story. You ain't in my shoe. My battle buddy that I thought she went off and left me. My battle, he went off. And left. You just don't know. You ain't ready yet. Oh my God, they, they tell you in treatment center. My God, are you sick and tired yet? We say yes, but then we go out and relapse because you ain't tired. You ain't tired. When you get tired, you change. When you get tired, you change. Oh my God, you better change before you lose what you got. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You better shift. Somebody say shift. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, because some soon a lot of people get tired. The first lady said, Boy, I can't do no more time with you. I done went down twice, which I can't do no more. I ain't coming back down no highways. My daughter then was just talking about they remember they used to get the food ready every every Sunday, Sunday morning going into prison. See, I ain't doing it no more. I ain't doing it no more. Sooner or later, people get tired. People get tired of going through hell with you. Sooner or later, you got to go up. Sooner or later, you got to be real men and real women of God. People ain't going to continue to put up this mess. Oh, my God, is going on in your life. Sooner or later, you got to quit making excuses and stand up and be a man. Stand up and be a woman. Hey, somebody give God some glory in the church. Oh, my God. Why you give me this microphone? Am I'm trying to teach the gospel. Uh-oh, so, so, let me, let me give y'all this. So, so, they ain't got nobody to turn to. Can I tell y'all this afternoon? God got it just like that. You may think you got somebody to turn to. You may even think you got a battle buddy. They ain't it. She ain't in here in it. Because a battle buddy will be tried and tested. That's why I was able to make that declaration about mine. Because she's been tried and still been tested. Oh my God. So, 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 but that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. You ain't got nobody. You still got too much stuff you're depending on. You're still depending on your 401k. You're still depending on your job. You still think you got one more chance. You still think you got this thing figured out. You still tell yourself it don't take all that. You still try to serve God on your way instead of God's way. You're not doing Matthew 6, 33, which is seeking first the kingdom. Oh, my God. We think on in her and online, we think we got this thing figured out. God said, okay, I'm just going to keep letting you go through. I know when to snatch you out. It's part of the process. Somebody say process. He loves us. He loves us. Let's go a little deeper. So they turned to their only source that was available to them. You need to let them go. Because you depend on them more than you depend on the source. Let them walk. Because they'll come back if they're assigned to your life. T.D. Jake says, can't nobody leave you if they're really assigned to your life. Some people, you got to let them walk for a season. The man of God told me, my God, on the prophecy, my God, there's going to be many that's going to try to come back. Just be ready to receive them in love. So I said, God, on the altar, increase my discernment. Because you got to love. You got to forgive. It's tough being a shepherd. I didn't say pastor. You can preach all day long, but you got to be the shepherd of people. That's when you get connected. You got a whole lot of preachers, but you ain't got very few shepherds. That's why y'all don't understand, because I got a shepherd's heart. I love heart. I want you to be built. I want you to be forward tough. I want you to come up out of that mess. I want you to be victorious. I know you can because I did. And I am doing it. I can't get no. Somebody give God some glory. That's a shepherd crying out to the sheep. You can. You can. Turn your pain into prayer. Somebody praise God tonight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody caught that. Might got a dip between a pastor and a shepherd. Oh, my God, anybody can preach to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, my God. So they had nobody to turn to. They didn't have nobody to turn to. When you find yourself locked away in a prison, you can always find God. Let me tell you that. You can always find God. Who, he, he curves and he's available. God is, curves about you and he's always available. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, the Bible said he's seen from heaven the people's misery and he heard. He's seen from heaven. He's seen their misery when they was being oppressed by Pharaoh and he heard their, groan, their groaning. So God sees you and I. And he hears you and I. Don't think that God forgot about you. But sometimes God's got to back up because you ain't ready. Even though you're miserable, even though you're crying, 
But as soon as he gets you out, you'll go back eventually because you ain't ready. So sometimes God got to, y'all see how I'm backing up, right? God said, you ain't ready. I see you. Oh, my God. I see you. He, he, he sees you. The Bible said he's seen from heaven, Jackie. He even heard from heaven. But in this story, he raised up the great deliverer, Moses. See, I'm trying to say, Moses, Moses, my God. But some of us, my God, like myself, it took five treatment centers before I really got ready. Even every time I went, I thought I was ready. <laughs> oh, my God, I said, I told Tiki I was ready, but I wasn't ready. I told my brother, I'm going to stop, but I didn't stop. <laughs> I told my mama, I promise you, this time, now I'm on my third treatment center. I'm going to do better, but I didn't do better. Now I told my grandma the fourth time, my God, granny, I ain't going back. I won't relapse, my God, but I did. And the fifth time, I found myself in that six by nine cell. That's why this speaks to me, because I can identify. But that time, I was ready. I throw my hands up and said I was tired. And 20 plus years later, I ain't never went back. That's why I'm telling you, some of you ain't tired. You got to suffer a little bit longer. And then God going to say, okay, now you're ready. Is anybody ready, though? If you're ready, come on, give God a hand. If you're tired of suffering, come on, give God a hand. Now turn your pain into praise. Come on, somebody. The very thing that used to cause me pain, now I'm praising about. The very thing that used to people used to laugh at me and talk about me, now I'm praising, giving God the glory. The thing that the enemy used to use to make me look bad, April now I'm making him look bad. Oh, but the enemy me meant for bad. I'm turning around. I'm crushing the enemy's head. That's why I testify. That's why I give God the glory. That's why I'm passionate, my God. Because the enemy tried to mock me. The enemy tried to kill me. But God shifted me, my God. And now I get to torment the devil. Now I get to use my testimony that God brought me through so I can help somebody else get through. I'll turn your misery into ministry. Who am I talking to in this church, my God? Don't get me started, my God. Turn your misery into ministry. Quit complaining. Change your outlook. God got you going through the misery because it's a ministry. Go ahead and sit down. I got one more and I'm going to get out of here. Let me bring some context to this, Alvin. Listen to your pastor. He turned the misery into ministry. Look at the type of ministry God that gave me, a deliverance ministry. Oh, my God, I had to get delivered. Now I got a deliverance ministry. Let God turn your pain into ministry. Somebody give God a hand. You going through because it's your ministry. Oh, I can't get nobody to say nothing. You got to go through that because that's your ministry. You got to feel that that's because your ministry. He got to leave you, that's your ministry. She got to leave you, that's your ministry. He got to let stuff go so he can reveal your ministry to you. Amber, y'all know not. Don't ever give me no microphone. Lord have mercy. Am I helping anybody so far? Come on, y'all talk to me. I, I, Come on, is, 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 Pastor, is God helping anybody tonight? I need to talk to three people. Is God helping anybody tonight? I know I'm talking. Oh, oh that's good. But God cares about you. God is available in your prison, in your pain, in your oppression, in your depression. He sees and he hears and he's available and he stands ready according to the scripture to deliver and set free. By the way, he said it is finished. You are already free. You just got to accept your freedom and walk out of it. I walk, walk it out. Somebody say walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. You just got to walk it out. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Jesus said it is finished. So you are already set free. Some things he has done for you immediately. Other things you got to walk out your freedom. It comes down to choices. You got to choose to be free. Write this down up on the point number two. It, it was profound though. Now, now watch this now. You're going to like this. So God turned the, 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 the misery into ministry. And they went off into the jail and started doing some things. They didn't cry. Uh, they didn't start complaining, talking about God, why me? God, why come? Uh, uh, she didn't talk to me. Why? God, why I got to go through this, God? I've been suffering for a long time. Why? Why? Y'all know what we do. We complain and murmur. Watch this. And so God said, okay, it's time to do something different. So, so he, the profoundness of this, I love this. Mm. As they prayed, their prison was transformed from a place of pain into a place of praise. Okay? These men are in a terrible predicament. I love you. Thank you, John McCarthy. They are in prison, wounded, bleeding, and chained. Yet they are filled with praises. Wounded, bleeding, and in chains and in prison. But they are full of praises wounded bleeding in prison and in chains full of praise you know cause what's in you gonna come out of you squeeze you and praise come out when you got God on the inside of you when you're going through trials and tribulations instead of the flesh coming out you, you're using all those vulgar words cause ain't no God in you 
Every time you get mad, you're cussing her out, you're cussing him out. Every time you get mad, you're giving somebody the finger. Every time you get mad, you're showing lying on people. You want, your, your foundation is too shallow. Uh, your root system is too shallow. Thank you. Thank you, my God. You got to be able to take a lick and keep on ticking. My God, you'll find out how strong you is and how godly you is when you're going through something and don't know come out but praise and giving God the glory. And I still love you. I still got a yes. I'm going on to see what the end of a say like going to be like. Though they slay me, yet will I trust in you, God. Oh, my God, I'm going on. See, but when we go through stuff, we start cussing. We start talking crazy. We start doing stuff we shouldn't do. We start looking at porn. We start smoking dope. We start drinking alcohol. We start going to the casino. We start doing everything that the world do instead of praising. Paul has given us a system, my God, in the midst of being beaten, locked up in stocks, doodling on yourself, pissing on yourself. They praise God in the midst of everything they was going through. Can I get somebody, just two people, to give God some glory in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your misery? I'm preaching it on the dollar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, social media, but this is how we do it at 205, baby. It's real in the field. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. But they in a cold-blooded situation, and yet they are filled with praises. They learned a profound truth, my God, from Job. That's why you got to learn to know the Bible. In Job 35.10, write that down. 35.10. Yet Job said, yet they don't ask, what is God, my creator, the one who gives songs in the night? Mm. See, right, it may be, it may be, it may be 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but you could be, a midnight, you could be in a midnight hour. Uh, God will give you a song at 2 o'clock but even though it feel like nighttime, <laughs> because you're oppressed, depressed and you're in the midst of a war but God will give you a song uh, you need to say God I'm going through <laughs> I'm dealing with some stuff but give me a praise <laughs> turn my pain into praise <laughs> I heard what that young pastor was talking about tonight my God I want to be able to praise instead of cussing her out instead of cussing him out and yeah I'm talking about that stuff yeah yeah because that's what we do when dev devil starts squeezing and God allows to be squeezed we quit on God we quit reading we quit praying we quit fasting we quit coming to church we start making excuses but you're going to find out how strong you is let God turn your pain into ministry my God that stuff you're going through it's all working together for the good if you learn the lessons my God through the stuff you're going through let God turn it around for a testimony do anybody got a testimony in this church other than Pastor Lord's Juju Peoples mm. oh my God let's, let's, let's get ready to close this thing out and so Job my, I mean Psalms 42 a says but each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me and though each night and through each, and though, through each night I sing his song Praying to God who gives me life. That's Psalms 42 8. But each day the Lord pours. Think about this. Look at me now. He's in heaven. He pours songs. He pours blessing. He pours strength. He pours healing. He pours peace. He pours miracles from heaven. You know why he can pour that? Because when you got God, you got all that. He don't have to give you peace. When you got Christ, you got peace because he is peace. This is profound. This is profound. This is profound. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can you praise him in the midst of your predicament? I'm talking about real praise. I ain't talking about shouting. I'm talking about praise because he's good. You like this. Your head is disfigured. Your eyes is black. Your lip is busted. Your back and bones is hurting. You cramping in your legs. You done messed up all your clothes. You ain't got nothing to drink. Flies is around. It's hot. And you there because you were sent on assignment to preach the gospel for the faithful, true, and living God. Instead of complaining, they start praising. God allowed him to be there because God had him on the side because what they was going through, can I help you? And I'm going to finish. It wasn't about them. It was about everybody that's in prison. I'm going somewhere. I can't. Uh, uh, so, so there are certain things I had to go through for you. I can't. Uh, there are certain things I had to go through for you. See, see, I had to go through that stuff so you could get free. Paul them had to go through that stuff so people in jail could get free. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. You got to go through it, Shemaine. I know they walked off and left you. I know your mama told you this. I know your daddy didn't do this. I know your uncle touched you. I know all that type of stuff. It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the process. I've been teaching you that God keep his hands on you. I know it's tight right now. I told baby, my God, it's a ministry. Marriage ministry is on the way, baby. 
There's a whole lot of young couples getting in the ministry that we're going to be able to help. We're going to be able to tell them what to do and what not to do. I promise you, I'm learning a whole lot of valuable lessons as a young shepherd. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It's a ministry. Your pain is a ministry. If you let God use it, you got to give it to him, though. But you got to learn your lessons in the midst of the pain, though. You can't come give it to him, but you ain't learned your lesson. Because you can come down and give it to him and then turn back around. But God said, you ain't ready. So that same thing you thought you gave me, I'm going to let you go right back to it. Because you want me to tell you why I know that? You want me to tell you why I know that? Because the stuff that Paul didn't went through, they turned it into ministry. They started praising God. That's how they knew. That's how I know they had given it to God. Can you praise him in the midst of what you're going through? I ain't talking about shouting. See, a shout and praise is two different things. Will you praise him when you got joy in the midst of the oppression. When you go to the work, to the job, you're happy. Everybody know you're going through hell. Everybody know your husband tripping. Everybody know your wife tripping. Everybody know the kids is locked up. All that. But you still got joy. She has praise. Praise ain't got nothing to do with you. Shout praise got to do with your expression of love, thankfulness, and gratefulness. Who am I talking to in the church? Oh, I ain't get too many. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me finish. Come on. Somebody give God a shout as I get ready to close. Come on. Give God a shout. Oh, my God. Point number three. Let's look at God's majesty. How you and I respond in the prisons of life is something we should pay close attention to. Pastor Mario used to always say, Pastor Peoples, people need to see how you came through. People need to see how you suffer. I don't care how much you scream and how much you shout. I don't care how much we scream, how much we shout. I don't care how much Bible we quote. I don't care how many classes we went through. I don't care how many foundations, I mean, how many encounters we went through. How do you suffer? How do you go through? We have to learn the art. Look at my verbiage. Let me sit down. The art. A-R-T. The art of suffering. There's a right way to suffer and there's a wrong way to suffer. There's a right way to go through and there's a wrong way to go through. When you go through the right way, people benefit from your suffering. People benefit from your pain when you go through right. When you keep your attitude right. When you stay faithful. When you stay Matthew 5 and 6. Clemisha. Blessed is the one man or man who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled from heaven. You're going to fill them. You're going to fill them. Can God trust you? The pain you're going through, God trying to enlarge your capacity. Because you got, you got a cold-blooded destiny waiting on you. I taught you that Sunday. You got to go through. It's preparation. It's stretching, Scooter. It's stretching, Shante. It's stretching, Jackie and Andre. It's stretching now. You learn Tiki. It's stretching. You've been stretched. Who she kid about Shunda. He shit cut up. You've been stretched. Who follow me, woman of God? You've been stretched. Oh my God, enlarge my capacity. You forget what you pray about. Shola, we forget what we ask God to do in our life. Well, guess how it's going to come? It was good for me that I was afflicted. Look at the, the story. The great apostle will is being afflicted. Destiny, the great apostle, is being afflicted. Ananias, go lay hands on him. And Ananias said, no. Acts the ninth child. No, no. I heard about this man. No, God said, go. Go lay your hands on him. I'm going to show this man. He's a chosen instrument. I'm going to show him all that he must suffer. Paul, for my name's sake. Go lay hands on him. He's a killer. He's a Hitler. I heard how he did torment God's people. God said, go. He's a chosen instrument. In spite of everything you have done, you're chosen. You're looking at it right here. If I'm chosen, you're chosen. God is no respecter of person. You listen to me, Minister Tina. He chose me in the midst of hell, in the midst of all of my mistakes. Most of mine was self-inflicted. See, some of y'all going through stuff that y'all didn't cause. The enemy caused it. Mine was self-inflicted. I done it. Didn't nobody make me do the stuff I did. I chose to do it. That's why I was able to recover because I was willing to uncover. I didn't blame nobody for my condition. I chose to get high. I chose to start a game banging. I chose to make decisions that was criminal and led me to prison. Both times. Oh, my God. I did it self-inflicted. But what do you do when you didn't cause it like these people didn't cause nothing? How do you handle that? How do you handle, my God, the persecution, the trials, and the pain when you ain't the one that caused it? When you're doing the right thing. All you're trying to do is love her. She don't want it. He don't want it. I'm trying to be a father to my son. But he don't want it. I'm trying to be a father to my daughter, but she don't want it. I'm doing everything for him, Luanya, but they don't want it. What do you do, my God, when you're trying to do the right thing and don't nothing but bad come back to you? 
People need to see how you go through stuff. Some of you, my God, God got your life on display because he's trying to train you so you can train somebody else, but you fell in the test. Y'all know I done been through hell since I've been a pastor, but I'm passing mine. Oh, that, I'm not self-righteous. I done failed a whole lot of them too, Jack. I can't get nobody to say nothing. But I said I'm passing mine because I made my mind. I'm not going to give up. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. I de I'm determined to pass my test. I have made many mistakes as a pastor. I have made many mistakes as a Christian. But I will not quit. Because you told God, I did, April the 30th. I mean, February the 10th, 1995. In the jury box. God, whatever you do, don't let me out of prison the same way I came in. And he didn't let me out. You told me in prison, Lawrence David Peoples, that you was going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. I promise you every day that vow is being tested. You said you was going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. I'm being tested every single day. I can make one choice and go back. It's so easy. In the midst of the oppression, in the midst of the pain, it's easy to return back to Egypt. But God always remind me, Pastor, you said you was going on. And then I don't want to give the people a chance to say, I told you he wasn't going to make it. See, you got to find a reason to push. See, I, wanna, I, don't, I don't want you to ever say, Mama, Pastor didn't make it. Hard as Pastor was going, he didn't make it. So then what chance do I get? This man growed up in my brother's basketball camp. Now he's sitting in my ministry as, up under me. My God, I didn't know I was going to be his pastor. I can imagine, Luanya, if your pastor went back, what they would do to y'all. That's why you got to be praying for me. If you really love me, you be, should be praying for your pastor. Because I promise you, if I went back, it would hurt a whole lot of you. If some of you walk away from God immediately. Some of you be like, it is what it is. You didn't make it. You keep going. That's because you ain't really connected to me. But those that truly love me will stand on the gap for me. Why am I saying it? Because I could go back just like you can. But you told God you was going on. I'm talking to me, but I told God I was going on. So in the midst of my pain, I got to keep praising. So when you see me down there, I'm finna close it. Shouting and screaming and hollering, pacing and walking. I'm working mine out just like you working yours out. But also, too, I'm carrying y'all stuff. I'm dealing with y'all stuff. Pain. Not my own, yours. And so in order for me to be able to handle that right and carry that right, because Bishop said you got to learn how to carry stuff. So you can carry a lot of stuff wrong and it become a weight. So you got to learn how to carry. I was talking to him day, you got to learn how to carry. So you got to learn how to carry. See what I'm trying to say? So what I do, I, I, when the enemy strike, when he get to messing with stuff, I go to striking back to worship. Worship is a weapon. That's why you got to be able to praise in the midst of the pain. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't call nobody. Say, you know what? I ain't got nobody. Close off. Shut it down. Shut off social media. Shut it down. It says just me and God in a foxhole. God will send you that person. Right now it's just you and the Holy Ghost in a foxhole. Yeah, yeah. And then start praising him. Start praising him. Watch what he do. Let me give y'all this and get you out of here. Let me give y'all this right here. My God. Uh, the, look at verse 26. It says, suddenly, because they was beginning to praise and worship y'all. Somebody say, suddenly. There was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner, every prisoner fell off. Let's look at the language of this. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly again. The foundation of the prison was shaken immediately, y'all. This is a heavy verse. I'm closing with this right here, Alvin. This is a heavy verse. Suddenly. Mm. And immediately, my God, all of a sudden, God moved in power. In one moment, y'all, all the prisoners was chained down. And the next moment, all of the prisoners was free. In one moment. All of them locked up. Imagine all of you locked up like this. In one moment, now you're free. But you got to follow the pattern. They didn't get bitter. They got better. They didn't complain and murmur and lie. They praised. And immediately, 
And suddenly, their change, and the reason why God allowed them to go through that, and they changed was a immediately broken. But they had to follow the pattern. Solomon built the temple according to the pattern. Noah built the ark according, y'all stay with me, of the pattern. There's a pattern in the kingdom. You get the results when you do it according to the pattern. When you build according to the pattern, when you follow the pattern, when you follow the plan, oh my God, then you see the results. You can't do what you want to do how you want to do it. You can't sidestep and compromise God's pattern. He don't go against himself. The word is God in the word. Come on. The word in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It's his word. He don't go against himself. If he say do it like this, he mean do it just like that. Solomon build according to the pattern. Noah build the boat according to the pattern. And then God told him specifically what to do. The measurements and everything to the ladder. What has God asked you to do? You're trying to do it the opposite. And you're not getting the, ah. You're not getting the, ah. You're not getting the suddenly. You're not getting the immediately because you're not doing it according to the pattern. It's heavy. I told y'all this is heavy, man. One moment things look bleak, and the next moment the power of the Lord changed the situation. Peter walked on water. One moment he's walking, and the next moment he's drowning, and the next moment he said, Lord, save me, and God right there. One moment he's walking, one moment he's drowning, and one moment he said, save me, and the next moment he's up. Moments. Immediately. There are some things that God is ready to do immediately. But you and I have to follow the pattern. You and I have to praise. You and I have to fast. You and I have to stay committed. You and I have to do it according to the plan. The plan is the process. The reason why stuff ain't changing is because you ain't following the plan. You're shouting about it, but you ain't following the plan. You're quoting scripture about it, but you ain't following the plan. Why am I able to say that so, so, so hard? Because I know that when you follow the plan, when I look in the mirror, I see the results. That's, that, that, that things happen immediately. Governor King, I ain't letting Lawrence peoples out. Follow the plan when you got out of prison. Two years later, he changed his heart immediately, signed the pardon. Ran to get, ran to get, ran to get a job. Filled out my OSBI, I mean, ran, they ran my OSBI and came back clean like I had never been in trouble immediately. They ran my OSBI, I've been in prison twice, I've been convicted of five after formers, Alonzo. Listen to me, y'all. And when they ran my OSBI at Bios, it came back clean like I ain't never been in trouble. Immediately, God started moving in my life when I got out of prison. The same governor wouldn't sign my pardon, give me a full pardon. Immediately, following the plan, because I told God I wasn't going to be no hypocrite. I told God I'm going on. See, well, see I'm, I'm sharing this with y'all because I've been following. I'm not perfect, but I've been following the plan, and I'm living in the results. That's why I preach with so much passion because God is so good, and he's so faithful, and I just want you to get it. If you listen to me, my God, and quit trying to do everything your way, I've done something right. Come by the, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, settle me down. I've done something right by the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit. All you got to do is listen. All I got to do is listen. Do I know everything solo? Nope. But I know how to access it. First from heaven, and then I got Moses. I got bishops. I got people around me that I can access. What I don't know, I know how to go get it. Who you got in your life that you can go get it from? Thank y'all for allowing me a little time. I'm finna close it out, though. I want things, and God is ready tonight. You that need jobs, that's easy for God. But God's trying to teach you a lesson in between your job. You're not getting it. God could give you a job immediately. Some of you men that got records, I don't care for sex crimes, whatever, immediately God can shift that if you do it according to the plan, if you follow the pattern. I just showed, shared a testimony that he can do it. He don't love me no more than he loves you. 
But will you follow the plan? Will you follow the pattern? Will you stay hungry? Even when he say no, it's not time yet. Will you keep loving her even when she don't want you to love her? Will you keep praying for him even when he's getting crazier? Will you keep loving your daughter when she keep cussing you out? Preparation, process, plan to your destiny. Praise. Pain to praise. Last one. Let's look at God's providence. Put that up there, Mahogany, so we can finish. I want to finish it. I don't want to mess with this no more. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. I know y'all need it, and I need it. I'm preaching to me. I think I'm preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to me. Why did God allow these men to go through this prison? This is you. Ask yourself, why did God allow me to go through this prison experience? See, prison is not just being in a physical prison. Are you imprisoned in your emotions? Are you free physically, but in prison in freedom? Are you free physically, but in prison in your freedom? Boy, I need to... Are you free physically? Yes, you are. But you're in prison and you're freedom. That's a bad place to be in. Think about prison. You have limited access. You could be going through trials. You could be dealing with situations. And you could be dealing with circumstances and still be making headway. When you stop progressing, when you stop movement, when you're no longer praying, when you're no longer striving, see, that's when you're in prison. You could be, my God, in society going through life because we all deal with life. I'm dealing with life, right? Cut me open, you'll start running. Cut me open, you'll take off running. But I'm learning how to be free and not be in prison in my freedom. So that means I got to keep moving. I was telling my daughter, the key to get through a storm, you got to go through the storm. Many of you have stopped in the midst of your prison. When you no longer have no movement, when you are restricted, when you're no longer praying, when you're no longer excited, when you're no longer trusting, when you no longer have no faith, when you stop giving, when you stop striving, you're, in, you're physically free, but in prison in your freedom. That is heavy. Don't stop. Don't stop. Look at this. All they done was serve the Lord. And after they, after they was released... After they prayed, the prison doors was open, shackles came off, and they was released. Mm. They went immediately to their brothers, and they left town. Is it possible, I'm finished, that God allowed Paul and Silas to be beaten, thrown into prison, and locked in stocks just so he might use them in Philippi? Is it possible that God allowed Paul and Silas to be beaten. Please don't miss this. Focus on me. Thrown into prison. Limit the movement. Movement distraction, y'all. Thrown into prison and locked in stocks just so he might use them in Philippi. Is it possible that God allowed them to endure all that pain and suffering just so God can get the glory? Y'all have heard me say everything that God does in your life and my life he wants the glory when I talked about how they, my OSBI came back clean I gave God the glory when I talked about how the part governor Frank Keaton gave me a full pardon I gave God the glory when we talk about 205 give God the glory take about 34 34 give God the glory. everything that God does in your life he wants the glory so what am I saying when God do it for you do you worship it or do you worship him who done it everything is it possible that God done this? Is it possible that you're going through because God trying to get the glory? That you was the only one that he could trust to go through it? Is, 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 is it possible? I'm trying, ooh, Tiki. Ooh, I know, baby. Is it possible that our marriage had to be the one? Because he knew that our love was rock solid since we were 17 and now we both 50. Is, is it possible that he, 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 he knew you was going to continue to praise even when she left? 
Is it possible, my God, that he knew you was going to keep pushing? Hey, oh, my God, in spite of everything you had to go through, Francetta, Madeline, y'all listen to me. Jackie, is it possible that God got you on display? Because he needs somebody and you are that one. Don't mishandle your ministry. Don't squander away opportunities. Process leads to promotion. Is it possible, Mahogany, that it had to be your daughter? Is it possible that Juju ain't coming, but it ain't time for him yet? Just keep praying. I was praying, God, I'm ready to give God the glory together in the same sanctuary, in the same church with my son. I'm ready to see me and my son and my daughter and my wife lifting our hands together. Is it possible that I got to suffer like this and I got to go through this type of stuff so the world can see that what number God? Now look at them two right there. Look at them two right there. They got the same testimony, Lawanya. Look, uh, your son got the same testimony as his daddy. Look, Juju got the same testimony as his daddy. Oh, it's just a matter of time. See, God's timing ain't your timing. We get impatient. And so we're trying to create Ismael's. We try to rush God. Just hold on, Sola. Oh, my God. Just hold on because everybody know. <laughs> oh, Shantae, everybody know. School, everybody, Jackie, everybody know. Everybody know Shay. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. Oh, this is helping. I'm trying to share. It's for Vartes, everything you went through is for his glory. Because you're going to reach back at this real estate and you're going to help these young men. You're going to help these young men. It's a ministry. Yes. Paul didn't ask to be beaten. Paul didn't ask to be thrown in prison. Sheila. Oh, my God. Listen to me, y'all. Tina. I'm trying to call your name because I want y'all to feel. Oh, my God. God know what he's doing. God know he'll trust the process. Oh my God, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Church is okay. Online, look, it's okay. Is it God though? It ain't the devil. Is it God that allowed you to go to prison? Not physical prison. Is it God? Ooh, ooh. Is it possible that God allowed them to be thrown in prison, locked in stock? Or is it possible that he sent them to prison just to save the jailer? Is it possible that Paul them had to be beaten, Minister Tina, because God wanted the jailer and his whole household saved? God allowed you to go through something for one person. But they went to jail, the Philippi jail, Shay, and God saved everything up in there. But they had to be beaten. They had to be left for dead. They had to be counted out. When you go through that type of suffering, the first thing fleshly, professing Christians say, notice I said fleshly, professing Christians say, they must be in some sin. They got to be in sin if they're going through that. God didn't remove this covering. They cursed with a curse. People will hurt you, man, because they, they take scripture out of context. They don't understand God's sovereignty. They don't understand God's providence. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? If you look at the outcome of this event, you will see that God used these events that I'm just talking about to save the jailer and his family to testify to the city officials, Paul them did, and to encourage the saints to teach them that God was greater than any pain a prison that they would ever face. They saved the jailer and his family. They got to speak to the officials in high-ranking places. God got to use their life. They help other people get free. That's why the Bible says in Revelation, they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You had to go through it because it's part of your testimony. That's why I'm not afraid, woman of God, to share my testimony because it is a testimony. You don't get the money without the test. And I'm not ashamed that I was a former gangster. I'm not ashamed that I was a drug addict. I'm not ashamed that I sold my clothes and all that stuff for crack cocaine. I'm not ashamed that I lived in abandoned houses. I'm not ashamed that I slept in abandoned cars. I'm not ashamed that I stayed gone for four and five days and weeks at a time. Look at me now. From pain to praise. When you know God had done it, when you know you're set free, you'll boldly testify. The Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came on Peter and they boldly testified. 
Don't call boldness that come from the spirit of arrogance. Read your Bible. The Bible said when the spirit of the living God, Mr. Tina, came upon the apostle, they preached with boldness. Let's get to the altar. Let's get it and put it on the altar. It's time to reverse. It's time to shift. Shift the pain to praise. Come give it to him.